Okay, so especially in your calculus class, anytime you see a limit that involves square roots, you wanna try this one trick first. And this is the standard trick for dealing with limits involving square roots. So what do you do? Well, first let's look at our problem. So we have the square root of this quartic polynomial and we're subtracting out x squared. And we wanna know what happens when x approaches infinity. So first, let's just try to reason it out as usual. Well, this is a quartic and we're taking the square root of that. So maybe we'd expect this to behave like x squared in the long run. You know, maybe this x squared plus one is, uh, is irrelevant in the long run as x gets large. So maybe this behaves like x squared. And that's one idea. So maybe that would suggest that this limit is zero perhaps. Well, we don't actually know how this x squared plus one will affect things. So zero is one idea, but it could be something else. We don't exactly know. So our intuition doesn't really help us in this case. Now onto the trick. So what you wanna do is you wanna multiply both the top and the bottom by the conjugate of this expression. So that is you change this minus sign to a plus sign. And what that does is it allows you to use differences of squares to get rid of any square roots in the numerator. So here's what that looks like. So I take my expression and I multiply it by the same expression, but I change it to a plus. Now, when I multiply this with the numerator, I'm left with this part squared minus this part squared. It's just difference of squares. So here's what my new numerator looks like. Now the denominator remains the same conjugate, but now I've gotten rid of square roots. And that has some benefits because usually evaluating the limit of the numerator is the, what causes the problems because of the minus sign and the square root combined. But if you just have the square root by itself, usually the limit is not so bad. And if you just have a minus sign, usually that limit is also not so bad. So if we simplify this a little bit, we get this x to the fourth subtracts out with this x to the fourth. So we're just left with x squared plus one over square root of x to the fourth plus x squared plus one plus x squared. Now we have a polynomial over an almost polynomial situation. Now the way you deal with this typically is you divide out by the degree of the denominator. In this case, because this is not actually a polynomial, it doesn't really make sense to talk about degree, but we kind of have an idea for what this degree should be, which is roughly speaking, it's going to be two because this is the highest term. So this is a quartic polynomial and you're taking the square root. So it's like a second degree polynomial. And then this X squared also doesn't affect the fact that this part is behaving like a second degree polynomial. So that suggests we might want to divide both sides by x squared. And you'll see why in a minute why dividing out by x squared helps. So when I say divide out by x squared, that's the same thing as multiplying by 1 over x squared, 1 over x squared. And since we're doing the same to the top and the bottom, that's effectively just multiplying by 1. So how does this simplify? Well, if I, if I multiply out the numerator, I just get 1 plus 1 over x squared. And if I distribute this with the denominator, I get the square root divided by x squared, and then I get one. So that would look like this. And now I can further simplify this square root. I can bring this x squared inside the square root. So what I'll do is I'll square it so that it goes inside the square root. And then I can simplify by each of these uh, pieces. So now this becomes a one, this becomes a one over x squared, this becomes a one over x to the fourth. So now I have this expression. And from here, it's very easy to see what the limit is. Because when x goes off to infinity, all of these terms with the x's and the denominators, they just go off to zero. So this is zero, this is zero, this is zero. So what I'm left with is one plus zero over square root of one plus zero plus zero plus one. And now I don't, need a, I don't need to write the limit of x approaches infinity. It's fine if I just leave it the way it is right now um, because the x is gone. So if I just add this up, I get 1 half. 
Okay, so that's how you deal with limits of square roots. Now, if you want a detailed look into limits and continuity and how to compute all these kinds of limits you see in your calculus class, I've actually put together a course specifically designed for that. You can check out the link in the description below. Or if you just wanna see videos like this, um, hit the like and subscribe button and also ring the notification bell so that you can be updated when more videos are up. Thanks for watching guys.